Hello, my dear students, and welcome to week seven overview. So during this week, we are going to talk about the approaches to environmental policy, starting from command and control. So command and control is a term used to describe a centralized system where decisions and orders are given from a central authority to subordinate units or individuals. In command and control systems, there is a clear chain of commands with a top-down approach to decision-making and communication. This helps in maintaining discipline. Moving to tax breaks and subsidies. So tax breaks and subsidies are incentives provided by governments to individuals or businesses to encourage certain behaviors or stimulate economic growth. Tax breaks involve reducing the amount of taxes owed, while subsidies involve providing financial assistance or support. These measures can be used to prompt renewable energy and research and development, support small businesses, or stimulate job creation. Then we have the green tax. Green tax, also known as an environmental tax or eco-tax, is a type of tax imposed on activities or products that have a negative impact on the environment. It is designed to discourage harmful practices and encourage more sustainable behavior. Green taxes can be applied to carbon emission, pollution, waste generation, or resource consumption. The revenue generated from these taxes can be used to fund environmental initiatives or prompt renewable energy projects. Then we have cap and trade. Cap and trade is a market-based approach to controlling pollution. It involves setting a limit or a cap on the total amount of emissions allowed in a specific industry or region. Companies are then allocated permits that represent their allowed emissions. If a company emits less than their allocated amount, they can sell their excess permits to other companies and so on. Then we have the local uh, incentives, which are special benefits or rewards provided by local governments or organizations to encourage specific actions or behavior within a community. These can vary depending on the location, often aim to prompt environmentally friendly practices such as installing solar panels, using energy efficient uh, appliance, or participating in recycling programs. Then we have the environmental policy processes. Identify the problem, identify a specific cause of the problem, uh, envision a solution and set goals, get organized, gain uh, access to, in, uh, to influence people and manage drafting of bill. Then we're going to move to the studying of ecology. Levels of ecological organization, we have individual, population, community, ecosystem, and biosphere. Then we are going to differentiate between biotic and abiotic factors. So biotic factors, parts of an ecosystem that are living or used to be living. Abiotic factor, parts of an ecosystem that have never been living. Decaying organisms are biotic factors as long as their structure remains cellular. Then we have the habitat, which is the specific environment in which an organism lives. Habitats provide an organism with resources, anything an organism needs to survive and reproduce, including food, shelter, and mates. Then we're going to talk about population size, the number of individuals in the population at a given time.